How do you think, you know, things have played out for the Bills? Because I know there's really no like new players or anything, but we've seen a lot of changes. So what are your just overall thoughts? Yeah, the changing has all had to do with the coaching staff and that's going to be the hugest question moving forward for obvious reasons I mean the the only offensive coordinator Josh Allen has ever worked with is now the head coach of the New York Giants so that means Ken Dorsey has a lot of uh, a lot of stuff on his plate to be able to get this offense you know really on the same page as it was late in the year last year and it, you know it well will be interesting to see how it's going to look from a couple of different perspectives one are we going to see them go all out with a passing attack, just like always? I would tend to think so. Um, will we see more of uh, more of an emphasis on the running game like we did late in the year when Devin Singletary was able to get his stuff going a little bit there? And uh, certainly what I'm looking forward to seeing more than anything is how their blocking scheme is utilized because we've seen them kind of do a little bit of everything under Brian Dable. They, they've had personnel that has, you know, in terms of the actual players, um, they've just some have been power some have been pin and pull some have been zone I mean it's it's just been kind of a hodgepodge so I want to see what their vision is with that moving forward you know we start now all of the different off-season events that happen and sometimes it feels like the off-season is even busier than the season itself and the first real big event that we've got coming up is the combine and you know we're just a week away what are you looking for at the combine what questions do you have kind of as we get ready to head down to Indianapolis? Well, my biggest questions all have to do with how they're going to maneuver the salary cap. And it's kind of the same thing as it was last year. Um, you know, the, the combine for me has become, and I've been going for a little over 10 years now. Um, it's become less about the actual prospects and more about talking with decision makers and, you know, talking with Brandon Bean, because this will be the first time we get to speak with him and Sean McDermott since the season ended and it will have been over a month at that point so i think watching and seeing how maybe their answers shift a little bit trying to look for little nuggets of information in there i think that's going to be the biggest part of it uh, but the salary cap stuff is real and i know you know a lot of fans out there saying hey just restructure a bunch of contracts the bills don't do it that way uh, brandon bean does not like to kick the can down the road he has said it multiple times and, you know, even on Eric Wood's most recent podcast, uh, when he appeared on it, it said, you know, he's not really into the one year all in sort of deal when a lot of people are wondering, hey, why don't you do things like the Rams? That's just not how the bills operate. And so they're going to have to maneuver, this, maneuver the salary cap. That means, you know, potentially extending some players to free up some room, cut some players, uh, get some players to, you know, agree to pay cuts. So it should be a busy few weeks uh, by the uh, by the combine there. This is an incredibly oversimplification of kind of what we're talking about here. But do you anticipate this team looking pretty similar to the group we saw last year? And I know the core is going to be very similar, but do you think this is more like we saw last year? It's just maybe a couple tweaks, or do you think there's more moves than we saw ultimately going into the 2021 season? There'll be more moves, but I think a lot of it will have to do with the back end of the roster as opposed to the starting lineup I mean the the one spot that we could definitely see a new starter is at cornerback you can throw a defensive end in there as well if they move on from Jerry Hughes um and but mostly I think it's going to be pretty similar you know maybe there's some changes to the offensive line but you, you got to think that their five that they went with at the end of the year they all have basically under contract in one way or another. The only question mark at this point is Ryan Bates, who's a restricted free agent, and they have the ability to match any offer placed on him. So, I, you know, I kind of wonder if it's just going to be a little bit of tweaking on the back end, starting to develop that depth and churn it through. Uh, but more than anything, I think uh, they've got their major core. They've got their stud players. And even Brandon Bean said it himself. You know, he doesn't, he, he said he wouldn't say that they're going to be big spenders and free agency or, or anything like that, which means probably the most substantial piece they add is going to be uh, with their first overall pick, number 25. Look at you. It's like we work together. My last question was going to be about the draft, and here we go. I didn't even have to set it up. So as we get ready, we're starting to read all these different mock drafts, and, you know, everybody's got an opinion. Are there any particular positions you think the Bills should be targeting in the first round? Is there anybody like that you're like, yes? 
that's the guy, or at least maybe that's the position that they should be looking at? Well, I, I tend to think that I would try to fight fire with fire here and I would go all in for a skill player uh, with the, with the first pick um, just, you know, whether it be a wide receiver, you know, it has to be the right value too, right? I'm, I'm not saying to force it or anything like that, but uh, the one thing that they have always lacked with this offense is has been that speed based home run threat. Now they have basically everything else kind of tied up there. Um, they've got developmental prospects in at their defensive end position and they've they really have a lot of of depth on that side of the ball I could see them going with a wide receiver you know if they tend to think there's a pass catching running back that uh, that they want to target at 25 maybe but I would probably wait till the second round for that one but yeah wide receiver throw cornerback in the bucket just because of Tredavious White but uh, yeah those are the two positions I would probably say hey good good solid chance of it happening but you can never rule out a defensive end with Brandon Bean and then I actually am going to ask you one last question I apologize I lied to you um is there any situation where you would consider trading the first round pick kind of like they did a couple years ago with Diggs see it would have to be for the right player and one that has room to grow and one that is not going to kill them on the salary cap because like I said before this is not a Rams operation. That's not how Brandon Bean does things. You know, maybe one of these years he'll he'll uh, he'll say, "All right, screw it, I'm just going to go all in this year." But the way that he talked, like quite honestly, a few days ago, did not sound like that. That was really his cup of tea. So, from that perspective, I would say if they can get a guy at the end of his rookie deal, and maybe that you know, a team that's kind of going in uh, the wrong trajectory and they're trying to rebuild and they want to move some pieces out. Uh, Maybe that's an avenue to do, but uh, I I wouldn't see them going for a huge huge home run, high salary cap hit sort of guy uh, with that, with that first pick. I I just, it, it just doesn't seem like Brandon Bean's style. All right. That is Joe Biscalia. Thank you for your insight. As always, you can read all of his work over at The Athletic. You can also listen to him in his podcast, The Buffalo Beat. I heard he's got a really great guest on his most recent episode. So yeah, give it a shot. Thanks, Joe. I'll see you soon, buddy.